Welcome to Business and Happiness Podcast. I'm your host, Bratzo Pobridge. This episode is sponsored by Life Success Academy, a place where you recreate your business and personal happiness. My guest today is Carolyn King, business owner, positive psychology master coach, and kinesiologist. Hey, Carolyn, how are you? I'm great, Bratzo. How are you today? I'm doing great. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks for getting up so early so we can talk about social media, business, and happiness. How does that sound? That sounds great. I think social media is so so important in today's world. Whether you love it or hate it, it's an important factor in, in running a business, isn't it? Yeah, you know what it is. I'm, I'm hearing from a lot of people, you know, from my students, from my co-workers, from some of the researchers, um, basically say, look, you know, I, I worked all my life so that I can, you know, be a researcher, so I can be a, you know, author, so I can be such and such. And now you're forcing me to do social media. This is ridiculous. I don't want to do this. So what is your advice? What's your comment to that? Look, I didn't like social media when it first came out. I know when Facebook started, it probably took me 10 years before I opened an account because I refused to do what everyone else was doing. (laughs) Um, But I have to admit, once I started running my business, I realised I needed a social media presence because that's where people are. And even if your clients aren't on social media, and I have to admit, half of my clients are not on Facebook, it's still a place that I that I think is important for SEO. And I think we'll go into detail about the different types of social media, but we need a presence out there so that people learn to know you, learn to like you, learn to trust you. You know, the know, like, trust factor is really important before someone actually connects with you and reaches out for your help. You know, the question that comes up, can you do business in today's world without social media presence without putting a lot of time into social media? I honestly don't know. And and there may be coaches out there that say you can. For me, I feel it's actually helped my brand. It's helped my business. And I've learned to embrace it. I've learned to, you know, when you run a business, there are so many aspects to running a business that you're not going to love every single part of it. But because I love what I do, I've learned to love all aspects of it or at least be able to be happy doing what I have to do because I know what the end goal is. So I feel you probably need to have some kind of social media presence because I know if I'm, I know personally, if I'm looking at somebody, if I'm, someone says to me, hey, go check out this person. The first thing I'll do is Google them and check out whether they're on Facebook, on Instagram, whether they've got a website. And it's, I might not spend much time on there. But I do check to see, all right, what's their credibility? How long have they been around? You know, what kind of content are they putting out there? Who are they? And then that will help me determine whether I feel connected with that person enough to move forward with them. Uh, 100% agree. I think we all do that, right? We all Google people these days because we want to find out more. I mean, I've heard from another colleague coach who, basically still believes in organic without really doing a lot of social media. And that's because he, he doesn't do social media. And can you make a living? Yes, without being on social media. But to have a real business, if you think of any real, real big business, I don't think you can name any that is that has no social media presence. You know, <laughs> from Google, Microsoft, Apple to, you know, any business. So, I think the answer is let's assume that listeners do want to um, increase their business, right? And at the same same time, uh, you know, not to struggle, not to uh, dread, not to, you know, be unhappy. Seriously, I mean, that's really important. So maybe we, we kind of discuss what can we do and what do you do because I know you you're doing really well you do a lot on social media it doesn't seem like you are putting ton of energy actually sorry I'll take that it looks like you're putting a lot of energy because you are being you on social media but I don't think you're putting ton of hours I think you figured out the way how to do it where you will have a presence you will answer questions you will do the posts 
but you do not spend hours and hours on it. And that's what most people worry about. They worry about getting every day and spending a couple hours on social media. You cannot have business if you do that either. No, I agree. And, and just getting back to the organic, what you, the point you made before about your, your colleague, you still get organic leads when you build your business. It's just this is another, another avenue to add to potential new clients. Yeah, and I just wanted to mention that it's not like the organic leads go away. They're still there. If you're good at what you do, people will recommend you. But when people recommend you, again, that person can go and look you up. So I just wanted to touch on that. Um, you know, in terms of social media, I think when I started, I have to admit I was very scared to put things out there. It wasn't an easy thing for me to do. I'm not someone that naturally likes to be in the limelight. So it was scary for me. What I've learned over the years is my why for why I'm on social media now is not for my business as such. It's not just to um, to get clients. That's not my why anymore. My why is to serve and to give back and to help people. That's so it. When I, yeah, and, and that's the why. And it's interesting because that makes a huge difference in how you feel about social media. Yes. If you're doing it just because you want to promote yourself and all you want to do is tell the world how awesome you are, it doesn't come across authentic and it becomes, you get attached to what you're putting out there. So you put something out there and you talk about how awesome you are and then no one responds and then it, you know, it might hit your ego and you feel a little bit sad or it impacts your mental health. But if you do things from a serving point of view where you say, all right, I just want to help people. What am I passionate about? Wow, I'm passionate about X, Y, Z. Let me share that on social media. Let me give that to the public. And whoever sees it, sees it. And whoever doesn't, doesn't. And the one thing I know for sure, likes do not tell you how many people have seen your posts because I have yes. had so many messages that have said, oh, I follow you, I just don't like or comment any of your posts. Me too. I know exactly what you're talking about. So That's it's intention, yeah. Go on. Mm -hmm. No, sorry. I just wanted to uh, touch base on serving. It's always about serving others. You know, any business, if it's not about serving others, if your focus is only on making money, you will, you may, you probably will not succeed. You may, but you will never be happy with what you're doing. So it's always about from the time you wake up, what can I do to serve? And then and only then. So that's it. Now it happens to be with social media, but you and I talked about this a lot, right? This is the key. This is the key statement that we put out there every morning. What can I do to serve you? And once you apply that to anything you do, including social media, then you're fine. There's nothing wrong with social media because you're serving, right? You're helping other people. That's absolutely right. And the flip side of that too then is to make sure that you have boundaries in place that people don't take too much from you. So social media is also, it opens the door for people to come back at you and comment or private message you. So it's all about serving, but it's also being mindful about your own well-being and what you can give. So only serve to the ability that you can give. You don't have to serve the same as everybody else. If you watch somebody else and they're posting, I don't know, 10 posts a day or doing Facebook lives and you can't do that, that's okay. You serve to whatever your capability is, your capacity is. Exactly, exactly right. So so let's let's talk about you have somebody, you know, who's I I, I had a <laughs> it's funny, the other day I had um, a colleague of mine reached out who just like you said never hit the like or never hit the, you know any comment and he said Man, you've been posting like a maniac lately. Like every day there's something on LinkedIn. And people don't really understand. They think that I spend so much time on social media and I don't. Let's talk about how that works. Scheduling. Oh, scheduling's awesome. Um, <laughs> so I first learned about scheduling in Facebook because Facebook does have its own scheduling program. Or you can you can schedule within Facebook without needing any external part, uh, part you know, um, software. But then I, I found a, a scheduling program that allowed me to go in there and it would push posts out to Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. And that's the key. The key is so that you can spend an hour or two a week and that's it. 
creating your posts, scheduling your posts, and then they just go out every day for you whenever you determine. Because what I found, and it's funny, I had someone say to me, wow, Carolyn, you get up early in the morning to post on Facebook. You're awesome. <laughs> uh, I don't get up early in the morning. <laughs> and at one stage I was doing videos as well. And it was quite funny. They said, oh, you're up at like 6.30 doing your hair and makeup and doing these videos. Yeah, no, I know, that's scheduling. <laughs> scheduling allows you to find the right time for your audience to maximise people seeing your posts. And you have to play with that. It depends on where you are in the in the world. It depends on who your audience is. And it depends on what platform you're on. And you can play around with that with scheduling. That's a great thing. You can say, all right, I'm going to try in the morning. I'm going to try in the evening. I'm going to try at lunchtime. It's having a play. Right. In addition to that, some of these tools basically have a little checkbox that says post for the best time. And they will, their algorithm will look for the best time for that particular platform and for your audience. So that's like in addition to, in addition to you figuring out. Um, so I also know that I remember uh, seeing that you used to create some spreadsheets for scheduling. Do you still do I, that? Or do I do. Okay. So this is this is part of my content creation. So one of the daunting things about posting is what if I run out of content? What if I run out of things to say? And I created a, a just a spreadsheet that has the days. So it has the date and the day. And then up the top, it might have Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever else I'm doing. And what's great about that is firstly, for the year, you can put in any key date. So you can put in Christmas and Easter if you, if you celebrate those days. You can put in World Happiness Day or World Chocolate Day or any other days that may be relevant to what you do. So then you know, all right, I need to do a post or I can do a post about that particular topic on that day. The next thing is I am I know most people in business are creatives. Their mind doesn't stop ticking over. So if you have a spreadsheet and you have an idea, you can write it down. So you may be inspired by someone else's post or someone else's email and you can go, oh, I can do a post about X, Y, Z. Let me type it in there. Or you may... Um, you may talk to a client and suddenly go, wow, that was a really good idea. I said that really well. Let me put that in as a post. Obviously not going against their privacy, but just it may be just a something that, that sparks something so that I've got this nice long spreadsheet of all the content I've posted. All the, So I've got future content. And sometimes I go back and say I'm not going to use that stuff, but it's in there. Not only that, I then have the past content. So if I decide now to reuse something I posted two or three years ago I can or even a year ago because I promise you people do not know what you posted a year ago you can reuse and it this is the key it took me a long time to realize that I could reuse my own content I felt like I was plagiarizing myself <laughs> I don't know about you but so but I felt like I was playing if I use my own stuff I'm thinking no, I've already posted that I can't post that again so well well, okay. So, so let me come. So we, <laughs> I'll come back to that. But with the <laughs> spreadsheet, so you put in a spreadsheet, and then from spreadsheet you take it into the software that you're using for publishing, correct? Yes. So that so my spreadsheet is really just a place where I can, when I'm I have a creative idea, I can write it down. If I hear a quote that I really love, I can write the quote down in there. I'm always crediting who, wherever I hear the quote from. Um, but it's just a place I can just stick random things, and then. I know what I want to post on what day. The way I operate is once it's posted or scheduled, I just change the color. So I know, all right, I'm up to there. So we've okay. got, yeah, so I can tell, all right, I'm up to here. That's where I'm up to. Uh, and then, yes, I take it into Canva. I tend to use a lot of, initially I used PowerPoint to create my posts. So if you went all the way back to when I started, my posts don't look very professional, but I started. Yeah, um, yeah. Now I use Canva, which there is a free version. I have the paid version just because I love it so much. But Canva, and I know you use Canva too. But I do. I it's do. a wonderful, wonderful program wonderful. that you can create anything. And, yeah, I just essentially cut and paste the quote in there. And if I've done a little blurb on what I want to say about the post, then I can cut and paste that directly into my scheduling program, whether it goes to Facebook or Insta or LinkedIn or wherever. And then I save them. I save all my posts. So when I download them from Canva, I have a big file of posts that I've created for three years. 
four years. Oh, I, don't know. I don't even know how long I've been creating posts. That's great. That's great. You know, when you said, um, you know, we ran out of ideas. So what I, you know, while back when I decided to, and I've been on social media for many years. Actually, I'm trying to figure out how many years. I think, so my son was, what was that, 20 years ago and more. Uh, when did Facebook start, right? So he was in college. And I remember being with a gentleman named Alok Kapoor. He was a, a CTO and he was working for Merrill Lynch and then moved to Fidelity. And he came over, we did wine tasting in my basement, my cellar with him and his uncle. And he said, hey, Brad, so you should really go on this is such a cool platform called Facebook. I was like, come on, Alok, this is for kids. Are you crazy? I'm not gonna go on Facebook. So I finally signed up the following day and I called my son and I was like, hey, man, I'm on Facebook. And I was so happy. He goes, Dad, you guys have your LinkedIn. Leave the kids alone. Let us <laughs> use the Facebook. Right? So this is really the early days when, um, you know, this was, uh, if you remember, in the old days, you basically had to have .edu address. You had to be a student in order to use Facebook. Right? That's when Zuckerman created it. But, but so let's go back to content. So. Um, so I've been using social media for many years, but finally I decided, I don't know, a year ago or so that I really want to be more active. So I create, I got up, you know, one Saturday, I said, let me just sit down and spend most of the day. And I created, I don't know, 40 or so posts, spent like, I don't know how many hours. And that was all great until they ran out. And then like three months later, <laughs> I didn't post anything else. So so I do very similar what you're doing, but I also realized that um, reposting is absolutely fine. So I'm in the software that I'm using, it lets me repost. So when I run out, it will go to the last one and will post it. You know, so the only, I guess, difference is I don't, um, I don't use the uh, spreadsheet. I go directly to this software. And just like you said, the ideas, uh, quotes, and then, then you could also create a um, different, what they call libraries. So maybe Mondays I'll do quotes, Tuesdays I'll do videos, Wednesdays I'll do articles. So you can like mix and match, right? But this definitely helps. Uh, so you spend one day a month or whatever it is and you, you create your content, right? And you, you, you had a good point there. I, I have reinvented how I post over the years. So when I started, I only posted once a week. So you don't have to post every day. Then I built to once every second day. Then I started doing topic days. So, you know, Monday was motivation and Wednesdays was, I can't remember what it was, but I had um, particular topic days and I did that for a year or two. And then now I just post. It's okay to evolve and change. And I, and I may still, Saturdays, I still have Saturday fun. That's the one thing I've kept. But it's okay to change how you post. It's, you don't, you're not stuck with how you're posting on social media. It doesn't have to be the same forever. You can try something. You can try your theme days, which are great. Um, I just chose, for me, theme days became too stressful because I think oh, I have to do something for this, whereas I like to just post whatever I feel. So the other thing with scheduling that I love is I get to schedule, and I schedule a post every day now, is if something random comes up during the day, I don't feel like I can't post. So I'll just go in and go, hey, guys, check out this article that I just read. Hey, guys, this just yes. happened. You know, and I think you're the same, but I saw that yes. you might have something scheduled every day, but then something random will happen and you think, I just want to share that with my community. Yes, 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 so, yes. And yeah. that, that's really important. You know, the other thing I noticed uh, with social media, um, <laughs> you know, Either we want or not, but we kind of public figures, right? I mean, we're not famous, but we oh, you know, yeah, but but seriously, we, we are out there, we're putting ourselves right to for people to say whatever they want to say about our products, services, coaching, right? Be that the reviews and so on, which we're not gonna talk about today, but we should another time. And uh, and 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 what else I wanted to say. I think you were talking about how, are you going on about how we have to be, um, we, we can't let other people's opinions and reviews on us actually impact our own mental health and happiness. Is that where you're going with that? Yeah. We, I mean, we definitely, what I was really going is this, uh, that people want to get to know us. 
So yes. in addition to sharing all the content and helping and uh, uh, you know answering questions, people love to know who we are. You know, you post a picture about yourself and having a fun and with your family, with your kids, you know, if you and them feel comfortable. And the reason people like that because they're getting to know you, right? They want to see real you. They don't want just to see quotes or just articles or they want to see who real Carolyn is. She's a real person. She looks, you know, she's having fun. She's having vacation. She's crying. She's, you know. We, we, we have all these emotions, although you and I are in, you know, call it business of happiness, whatever it is, but we have our ups and downs, right? We humans, we all are. So they, and they we like make mistakes. Get... Yes. Share our mistakes because you've got to laugh at yourself. We all make mistakes. We all do things wrong. So yeah, I agree yes. with you wholeheartedly. It's putting, putting you in your business and on social media because you if you're on social media I agree but so you have to be comfortable sharing a bit of you you decide how much of you you share yes but you need to be comfortable sharing a bit of you so so you agree with that that people want to get to know you in addition to learning from you absolutely and I think many of us have our own stories as to why we got into what we got into and I think it's important to share that. And I, I touch on that quite often. I don't harp on about, I mean, I went through depression many years ago. I don't use that all the time because I, I know that people don't need to hear it all the time. But every now and then when I'll say, you know, this is what happened. I used to suffer from depression and now I'm here. Or I stuffed up today. I did X, Y, Z or whatever it is. You know, today I had a bad morning and I spilled my coffee and I stubbed my toe and I swore at the kids, you know, whatever it is sharing that humanizes you so that people feel connected to you and if they're connected to you they're more likely to reach out to you so even when you do your quotes doing a little post about why you're sharing that quote I think is really important isn't it but so why you're what personal investment you have in that quote or why you're sharing that article or you know and sometimes it may just be I had a conversation with someone and I noticed this is an issue or maybe I personally resonate with X, Y, Z because it helped me here. Right. How do you see uh, social media helping your business? I think it's really, again, getting back to what we just said, it allows people to see who I am to see if they connect with me because not everybody is going to connect with you and that is okay. We're coaches. We're in the business of helping people. So if you go to somebody that you want to help, that you want them to help you, you need to feel connected to them. So I think social media gives them an idea of who you are, where you stand, you know, what your beliefs may be, what who your personality is so that when they come to see you, they go, they know a little bit about, okay, you're that person. I, I can connect with you. I, I, I like you. Or they may go, nah, you drive me nuts. I can't go to you. And that's okay too. So I think it's, it, it's a way of people connecting to you. And obviously on, a, on the internet, I think, but so you've mentioned a lot that SEO, it helps with the SEO, doesn't it? It helps with people finding you. Yes, I, I think that's something that, you know, we were going to mention in the very beginning, but I think it's important that we mention it now because people say, you know, why do I really need to do social media? Well, here's one, as you said, here's one of the key, key reasons why. When somebody Googles you, the first page, it's almost guaranteed will be some of the social medias, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, almost guaranteed. Right? Uh, why? Because Google is looking for credible sites, the most credible sites that talk about you. Who is the most credible? You know, it's a Facebook, it's Amazon if you're a publisher, it is, um, you know, a Twitter, because they trust these companies. And that's why if you publish often, when you, when people Google you, they will see these posts, right? Like you'll see, uh, Twitter, right? They, they'll, they'll show exactly on page one, hey, Caroline just posted Twitter, you know, six hours ago. People like that. So do that you are active. Although I happen to know some of like, particularly one, particularly one individual who's like well-known in this industry. We decided about a year and a half ago that 
it, he's not going to do social media anymore. So the, the, the point is that, yeah, you can decide not to, but now he's at the point that he can't, he's, he's got so much business, he cannot manage it. I think the idea is how do we have this, you know, a uh, 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 24 seven business when we don't have to work long hours and, you know, we don't have to struggle to get that one client, right? How do we have that business? And this is really where social media and internet helps a lot. I agree. And if, even though he stopped doing social media, I'm guessing unless he's closed his accounts down, that content's still out there. So people can still look him up and it's still there. He may not be active anymore, but all that stuff's still there. And I happen to know another person I was just looking two days ago. He's doing something really smart. Uh, he used to, without naming, right? He used to, he used to have like one of the top podcasts, you know, millions of listeners. Now all of a sudden I see he podcasts, his podcasts every day. He is just reusing the old podcasts. Who can you know what he did five years ago? Who's gonna it doesn't really matter? So you can unpublish them and publish them again. You can do anything with same thing with any social media, right? Absolutely. I mean, your your audience changes, your audience grows. They don't know what you did a few years ago. And people forget. And honestly, even if they don't forget, even if they do know, I happen to like this person. I can listen to his podcast that I listened five, ten years ago. Why not? They're good. They're good stuff. <laughs> yeah, you can learn something again. Sometimes re-listening to something is re- learning it or taking on a different, something that you missed the first time. Right. So, so let's give them a, a final thoughts on social media. If, if we... We basically saying they should do it uh, if they either new in a business and or if they want to expand their business, right? I would definitely say find where you're comfortable. Um, you know, you said something funny before about how your son said leave the Facebook to the young people. Well, the young people generally aren't on Facebook now. That's showing our age. Um, the young people like to be on Instagram and TikTok. So you really need to consider where your audience is, who you want to reach and where you're comfortable with and then start there. You don't have to be on all across every single social media, especially at the start. But the biggest thing is start. Start. It doesn't cost a cent to be on Facebook. It doesn't cost a cent to be on Instagram or TikTok or LinkedIn or Twitter. Start. Start wherever you feel comfortable. That's that's really the key. And I will just add one thing to that that, again, I noticed just recently uh, look when you Google yourself and you see under that social media account what it says. Just make sure that you update your social media accounts and that they are consistent, whatever they say about you. Because one might say you're doing this, the other say you're doing something else. So that consistency is really, really important for your clients. Absolutely. Carolyn, thank you so much. This was a great discussion. We will chat again soon. Awesome. Thank you, Brazzo. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Become the Life Success Academy founding member. Go to academyoflifesuccess.com and click on founding member to get 60% off full membership.